The second project success pitfall on our list is scope creep. I doubt that I would have to elaborate much when it comes to this project management monster, as it is probably one of the most recognized causes of project failure and stakeholder dissatisfaction. Now, Before we go into detail on scope creep, let's quickly revisit what the project scope is. Essentially, the scope of the project can be defined as the extent of the project work consisting of everything that will and will not be included in the project. In other words, it refers to all the outputs that the project will produce, also referred to as the product scope, as well as the work that is required in order to produce it, which is often referred to as the project scope. The scope of the project is usually defined in the project scope statement and the work breakdown structure. These documents combined are known as the project scope baseline, and it may only be altered by means of formal and documented change management systems. Now back to scope creep. In a nutshell, scope creep is the gradual, uncontrolled, or sometimes even unnoticed growth of the project scope over time, which ultimately leads to bloating of the project scope and consequently increasing the project time and costs. Now carefully consider this definition and note the use of the word uncontrolled. Scope creep and scope changes are not the same thing. Projects come with immensely high levels of uniqueness and uncertainty and as such we expect that without fail there will always be changes to the project constraints. Changes to the project scope baseline do not necessarily contribute to project failure. That is, if they are properly investigated and formally authorized by means of a structured change management system. Scope creep specifically refers to changes to the project scope baseline that were not assessed for their impact and formally authorized by individuals or groups with the right level of authority. These changes tend to seem small and as a result, they are introduced without properly planning for the ensuing effects on the project constraints. The effects of compounding on these small changes are also something that should always be considered. As a bunch of seemingly insignificant changes, when considered holistically, may have adverse effects on the project budget and schedule. As I have mentioned, there are cases in which changes to the scope are absolutely necessary to ensure that the project creates the business benefit which was intended. Care should be taken though to ensure that these necessary changes are appropriately processed and authorized, else even the necessary scope changes may constitute scope creep. There are various factors that contribute to scope creep, the most prevalent of which in my experience are the following four. An ambiguous or ill-defined definition of the scope. An ill-defined scope can be the result of several things. It could happen that the project team did not sufficiently elaborate on and refine the initial scope as captured in the project charter, or the work breakdown structure was not developed with due cognizance of all the deliverables that have to be created. Regardless of the reasons why, if the scope baseline is not complete and defined with sufficient detail, the project team will start implementation of the project without proper guidance as to what they are to deliver, which will inevitably lead to changes to the scope. Chances are that if the scope was not defined with sufficient detail, the change control system will also be ill-defined or non-existent. These changes to the scope will then be made without due regard for their effects resulting in scope creep. Gold plating. Now, gold plating is a term used in project management to describe the act of giving the project end users or the client more than what they originally requested. This is something that inherently forms part of human nature. I mean everyone thinks it is better to go that extra mile and provide the cherry on top of the cake instead of just the cake, right? In projects, this behavior inevitably leads to increased scope, 
which in turn increases the cost and time associated with the project, resulting in a situation where a client pays more for something he or she did not really want to begin with. This is usually especially prevalent at the project team level, as most additions of this nature tend to occur without the knowledge of the project manager. Ineffective scope and requirements management or a complete lack thereof. Scope and requirements management in this context simply refers to the monitoring and control of the project scope status, as well as managing changes to the scope baseline. This process integrates with overall project monitoring and control, as well as the execution of the project's integrated change control procedures. The length of the project. This is a characteristic of projects that is very often overlooked in terms of the effect it has on not only complexity, but also on the uncertainty surrounding the project. It stands to reason that longer project durations will have very large impact on the aforementioned three factors. Not only that, but longer project durations means that the project will be executed over an extended period, which opens the project environment up to changes. These changes may be deemed necessary, but care should be taken that value-added changes are still processed correctly and with due cognizance of the importance of integrated change control procedures. Another drawback of longer project timelines is that the project team has more time to introduce changes which they may deem necessary without following due procedure, thus resulting in more gold plating of the project scope with its ensuing negative impacts on the project schedule and budget. These four factors, in my experience, are the biggest culprits when it comes to scope creep, and by effectively managing and avoiding them, you are sure to avoid the silent project killer. Now, before we take a look at how to counteract these four factors, let's first spend a little time on a general tip for combating scope creep namely project team communication and briefing. What I am specifically referring to here is ensuring that the project team is acutely aware of the dangers of scope creep, thus effectively deterring them from adding to the scope without following procedure. Before a project really starts, usually after the project initiation phase has been concluded, I recommend holding a kickoff meeting with the project team or at the very least the core project team who will be the managers of the various sub-projects in the work breakdown structure. In this session, take the time to orientate the team and brief them on the scope and the intended business benefits the project is supposed to realize. Also take the time to brief them on the importance of strict change control procedures and the dangers of making additions to the scope without the knowledge of the project manager. Make sure they are aware of the adverse effects these changes may have on other project constraints and in the process deter them from introducing any such changes. Good communication is of cardinal importance in all project matters and the same holds true for communication with the project team. The following tips can be used to directly counteract the four factors that contribute to scope creep. Counteracting an ill-defined scope definition is a simple matter of ensuring that the scope baseline is complete, comprehensive, and clear. In order to do this, follow the basic steps as laid out in the Project Management Body of Knowledge 6th edition, or the steps that form part of basically any well-defined project management methodology. Start by collecting the requirements, and once complete, facilitate a requirements clarification session with the main stakeholders to ensure that they are clear and that everyone is on the same page. Once the requirements have been reviewed and approved, start compiling a comprehensive scope statement and create the work breakdown structure by decomposing the scope into subcomponents based on the envisaged deliverables. Then create the work breakdown structure dictionaries which contain more detailed information of each of the work packages. Once the scope statement, the work breakdown structure, and the work breakdown structure dictionary have been completed, 
arrange a meeting with the relevant key stakeholders to review them and approve them as the scope baseline. This baseline can from there on out only be changed through formal change control procedures. To counteract gold plating, the same approach discussed as a general tip to combat scope creep can be employed. Make sure the project team are fully aware of the dangers of introducing unauthorized changes and make sure that they know that the project's success is dependent on delivering exactly what was defined and approved in the scope baseline, no more and no less. Always make sure that the project team is knowledgeable of the change control procedures and make sure that they always follow these formal procedures. Seemingly insignificant changes may have adverse rollover effects. For instance, if the development department changes the colors of a warning system interface, it can have adverse time and cost effects if a different department has already developed and printed the user manuals. It seems insignificantly small to change a few colors, but it may result in the need to do significant rework by other project team members. This simple example can be used to make team members aware of the possible effects of unauthorized changes. Counteracting the third factor is a simple matter of including scope control and scope monitoring guidelines in the project management plan and implementing a thorough and strict change control procedure. Make sure that the scope is actively monitored throughout the project execution and enforce the change control procedure on any changes, no matter how small they may seem. The change control procedures should include a change request form, which must be submitted for all changes. The change requests should then be reviewed by the project manager and the proposed change should be subjected to a thorough impact assessment, during which all possible effects of the change should be considered. The results of the impact assessment are then submitted to the Change Control Board together with a recommendation from the project manager for final approval or rejection. If the change is approved, the project baseline and affected project document should be updated and the implementation of the change should be monitored and controlled as part of scope monitoring. Doing this will ensure that only approved changes are implemented and that their effects are duly incorporated into the project baselines, thus effectively managing stakeholder expectations. The last factor, project length, is one that cannot really be influenced all that much. If the project has a long project life cycle consisting of several phases, this cannot be changed. What can be done, however, is to make sure that the project is planned and implemented in a phased approach with detailed plans and baselines in place for each phase. Once a phase draws near to its end, do the thorough planning for the next phase and update the overall baselines and plans as well. This ensures that the moving target, which is the end of the project, is managed in small manageable chunks, which allow the project team and project manager to enforce much greater control over the scope. Also make sure that all of the aforementioned measures are in place. The important thing about scope creep is to be aware of it and the dangers it poses. Make sure that no unauthorized changes slip through the cracks and your project is bound to be healthier and more successful.